Hey, 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 this is Tammy Gaines, and I am so excited to welcome you to my first podcast of Tammy Talks, Gab, Grub, and Growth. And I've been chatting up the podcast for the last couple of days because I've been like having this really great spiritual buzz about it. And somebody said, what's it all about? So I thought I would tell you, sort of give you a framework and then introduce my very awesome guest for today. So what I was, what I'm trying to create, what I will create is a space that feels like your favorite kitchen growing up. And I'm sure everybody knows what I'm talking about, whether you were home or at an aunt's house or a grandmother's house. At some point during a gathering, whether it was a holiday or a backyard party, there would be a random group of people that just ended up in the kitchen talking about whatever, like, sol you know, your Uncle George solving the world's problems on, you know, international mystery. Um, and when you got in the kitchen, it was like a place that was like the cone of silence was there and it was real raw talk. And usually there was elders at the table and there was young people at the table and they were learning from each other about how to just survive the world. So um, this is gab, grub and growth because we're gonna like sit in the kitchen together, pull up a chair, sit down at the table and talk about stuff, particularly personal stuff all with an eye toward being more resilient. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to get into a bit about what resilience is, but again, I want to thank you for coming and joining us. Our table is huge. So all are welcome. Uh, grab a chair, grab your favorite beverage. It's lunchtime. So grab a, you know, grab your lunch if you want. Uh, but let's get started. So first of all, um, I want to thank profusely brian johnson are you out there brian oh stop my, it now my brother <laughs> from another mother all right brian uh -oh. all right i'm gonna do like just very quick and then people will just learn to love you as i have so look everything happens on purpose right i was in a meeting <laughs> that i did not want to go to uh for an event i was trying to figure out how to support because I wasn't quite in alignment with the entire thing. But Brian was on that call. He was one of like the 15 people on that call. And during the hour conversation, I just kept saying, I got to meet Brian Johnson. I don't know what he's up to, but there's something about his vibe and his authentic nature uh, that I wanted to connect with. And so we did. We talked after. Right, Brian? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. I remember. It was a great conversation. Oh, my God. I felt like I knew you. I was like, I don't know why I felt compelled to like reach out. Um, but anyway, Brian is uh, has a business development background. But more importantly, he's created it. He's created this platform called Solivity, which to me is a really positive alternative to all the other social media networks that are out there. So Brian, thank you for the opportunity to be a host on So Liberty and also for letting me take this ride with you. Oh, absolutely. This is what it's all about, Tammy. I mean, you're bringing some noise and funk to this too now. I mean, <laughs> um, uh, your attitude, how you want to help people, um, what you see is what you get with you. And I love that about you. Yeah, so real quick, because some people are going to be new to jumping on here, can you give us like a one minute sort of snapshot of why So Liberty is so amazing and why you created it? Um. Okay. So really quick, because I, I I don't want to hog Tammy talks. Mm -hmm. Um. At its core, So Liberty is a inclusive, diverse community, um, and a media network um, that supports people in living creating and living their best life today. Um, and how they do that is through living their passion, which is something that they love to do, turning that into service, which is purpose, and then creating their life from that, which is living. And so, you know, we help people through our inspirational content to take aspirational steps that again, creates that best life today. Nice. 
Nice. Congratulations. And I know you're just getting started, even though you've made a tremendous amount of progress, like good things are just popping off. Um, so before I introduce my next guest, I just want to remind everybody that we are live. So if you have a question or a comment on Facebook Live or YouTube, go ahead and pop it in the comments and we'll see it and we'll be happy to respond to it. So my second guest, I just met, I think, three weeks ago, but I feel like she's a sister. <laughs> uh, and her energy and her vibe is so calming and so intelligent. Uh, I just asked you at the last minute to come on here because I loved like being a host with you for these last couple of weeks. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, Candace Harper. <laughs> woo woo! Hey, woo! woo, woo. <laughs> Thank you for that, that introduction, Tammy. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I feel the same way, Tammy. Yes, we only met three weeks ago, but you know, like I was telling you earlier, you know, when you call to the universe for something, it comes. And I was like, I need to meet some more women who are up to some things and, you know, have that same kind of energy and have, like you say, resilience and, you know, some people who, you know, they say you're, you are the five closest people, the five people you spend the most time with. Right. I'm like, I need some more quality people in my life. And then you should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, and I love your your focus on relationships and love and loving yourself most of all. Mm -hmm. Um so we're going to, you know, I want to do a deeper dive obviously as we get into it, but um mm -hmm. the candy for people that that don't know you yet. Mm -hmm. Uh what's like a 2 minute like how do you help people? Okay, so um like fundamentally I Fundamentally, I help BIPOC plus professional women create a love life that loves us back. And the reason I say us is because we're all on this journey of learning how to create what we need. And the way I do that is with a three part framework of heal the past, love yourself unconditionally, start your love life over from a clean slate. And so within those three parts, there's a lot of work to be done for all of us. <laughs> oh, who you mm. 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 Up and vote work. Mm. <laughs> That's a full time job. Shoot. It's it's sure a full-time job. So, and, and you never get it done, right? Like we're always on the path of growth. Otherwise, you know, what's the alternative? You're either growing or dying, right? Right. So, um, you know, what I am is a guide, a healer, a, you know, a heart healer, a, um, a hypnotherapist. So I give suggestion. I help with actually causing transformation in those areas. And, um, yeah, that's what I do. And I'm no nonsense. Like I'm a coach for real. You know, a lot of times when it comes to relationships, people just want people that will sit around and co-sign that mm -hmm. everyone else sucks but me. Mm -hmm. And I'm that coach that lets people know, like, not that you suck, but you got to know how you're responsible for your experience and, and how to become powerful around it. And that's what I help with. Absolutely. Help yeah. Oh my God, I love it. So I think that's core. Um, one of the cores to um resilience is that so before we um before we dive into it let me i just want to level set with you know you guys when we talk about resilience mm -hmm. and i do think resilience means something different to everybody and i do mm -hmm. think it might be informed by, by your life experience yeah so i've had you know i've had a lot of um adversity in my life um so when I thought about, so back in July, I was, went to the Bahamas for this conference and I was sitting at the pool by myself thinking about, boy, I've like really traveled a long windy road mm -hmm. with lots of potholes, but I keep bouncing back. So maybe that's like what I really want to focus on. And it came to me like, that is what I really want to focus on is teaching people resilience because I believe resilience has a ripple effect. Mm. So stay with me on this one and feel free to chime in. Mm -hmm. If we could create resilient, more resilient people, then we could create more resilient families. Mm -hmm. And then we can create more resilient communities. Mm -hmm. And eventually mm -hmm. that has uh, a ripple effect. And communities are both individuals and businesses. And it has a ripple effect that goes out that could create a stronger world. And maybe we wouldn't see like most of the nonsense that's going on right now. Yeah. Whether it's like stupid weather balloons or, um, <laughs> it, you know, school, shooting. school yeah. shootings, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. So I'll stop. Like, 
that Ooh. that's sort of my mission. I, I believe that we could create a ripple effect if we create more resilient people. Hundred percent. You know, Tammy, as we're you're talking about this, I'm I'm thinking about the fact that, uh, you know, you know, both of my parents are were psychotherapists, and they they are about helping broken children that become broken adults that that become broken parents, right? And that bring right. up broken children or non-resilient children. And I was thinking about the fact that when you were talking about this, it's like, man, how, how wonderful would it be if people throughout the dysfunctional ways that they cope and create and had in their lives more positive and practical and progressive ways of coping, which become the legacy that they pass on to the next generation, their next generation of children. And I really resonate with what you're saying because that's like, that's how you change the world. Right. That's really right. how you change the world. And, and so that's, that was my initial thought, you know. It's funny, right? It's not monumental when you think about it. Like no. everyone's coming up with, you know, my daughter is like in STEM. So she, people are inventing stuff and creating stuff. But I do think fundamentally, and Candace, I'd love for you to like take a shot at this. Like we talked about emotional intelligence before. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's more powerful than anything, any sort of invention you can come up with is just teaching people how to grow through their challenges. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that it also helps you know where to direct because my belief about resilience in general is that we all have it. We just don't know where to put it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right? Right. So what are the options? How, how Wait, what are the options? What's that? What are the options? Like, what are the options for where you put it? Well, think about like, you know, resilience requires a lot of, of uh, intention and commitment, right? So if, if my intention and commitment is to being high, I'm going to be an addict. So I'm, and if you've ever known an addict, they are resilient as hell at staying high. <laughs> <laughs> right? Woo! Right, if I know oh, that I man. want right? right out the gate, we're gonna get like we're gonna be put in a box right out the gate, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm totally fine with that. I hope we get censored. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm just saying it like it is, right? Like we we all have that ability to to um, have stick to itiveness. It's just that with emotional intelligence, we get to realize where to put that and where to where to come up with our most uh, committed and and uh, constructive intention. Right. We all have it, and it's that ability to recognize that because I think we live in such a. a uh, sort of black, white, binary kind of society that we often want to say, this is wrong and this is right. It's like, no, you have power. You have a strong suit. You just don't know where to apply it. So once we get out of that mindset of, you know, I'm what I'm doing is wrong and start to understand that how I'm going about it is right, then we give ourselves that gift of, of, of resilience and that's the emotional intelligence. Like, why mm -hmm. can't I put that towards getting an education? Mm -hmm. Why can't I put that towards, you know, loving my children? Why can't I do put that towards something that's gonna build, you know, financial wealth in the future rather than, you know, staying high or staying committed to uh, gossip, which a lot mm -hmm. of people are, which I know that sounds minuscule, mm -hmm. but a lot of people commit their lives to that, you know? Interesting. Okay, so I, you know, like remember the old days point counterpoint? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a counterpoint because I don't think we all have it. No. I think it could be developed and taught. Um, but listen, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I just want to do a little deeper dive into that. that yeah, idea. Cool. I love it. All right. Cool.
You can find all the Satana products at our Go Shop on Solivity at go.solivity.com now. Shop for beauty products, skin care, hair care, it is all there at the Go Shop. Go Shop Solivity. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back. Hi. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> he talks grabbing grub and grub. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a great show. Uh, <laughs> tip your way. So listen, I wanna I wanna kick something around because I was having very conflict conflicted feelings, Candace, when you said like we all have it in us. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay, so I have people in my circle that come to me to tell me their problems. And number one, I can't decide if they're trying to solve them or if they just want to bitch. Yeah, yeah. Those are two yes. very different things. And the people that are just coming to bitch, like I just literally have to just like bite my tongue yeah. for the duration of the conversation. Those people don't have any built-in resilience. They have like some other different muscle that seems to work. <laughs> And in the face of a challenge or an adversity, like their go-to is like, wah, wah, wah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, you know, well, Brian, I mean, you know, people like that too, but. So my question would be, just for the context of this conversation, like what's the, what distinction are we making about resilience? So are we making it that resilience is only something that you're putting towards positive things that work? Are we making it something that it's just being able to to stay committed to what your intention is? Okay, so that is an awesome question. So these are just some phrases that come to mind for me when I think of resilience. And there's like, you know, I could do a much deeper dive. But yeah. um, at the end of the day, like to me, being resilient is being able to recover quickly from difficulties or from challenges. Mm -hmm. Got it. Like, mm -hmm. for example, we've all seen people in the airport. I was with my kids flying someplace and there was a guy in front of us with his wife and little son who was probably like five. Mm -hmm. The dude missed his flight. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what you're arguing about. Like your flight <laughs> left at X, the gate mm -hmm. closes at Y and you just showed up. Right. Yeah. Right. So he right. was cursing out the woman behind the the uh, rep behind the like when I say cursing out, like I was embarrassed. Like I told my kids, like, go wait over there. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then I was like, how do you like at the end of it? He just looked at me. I was like, how do you feel now? You still mm -hmm. missed your flight and now you've embarrassed your family and personally like embarrassed my kids. So mm. being able to recover quickly from difficulties. You guys want to talk about that for a second? Cause I, I have two more that we can like chat about, but that come on, you can't <laughs> let everything in life take you out of the knees. Yes. Right. I agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I do think there is that level of being able to recover and pivot and flow with life. Um, but I also think that like when we're talking about resilience as a way of life or as a way of being, I think that 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 understanding that I could be like in that moment, he could have said, if I pivot, I might be able to solve this problem. Right. And he mm -hmm. wasn't behaving with resilience in that moment. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist within him because he was committed to acting ugly about his own irresponsibility. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian. He's such a good person. Yeah. But, go ahead, go ahead, Brian. What do you say? Um. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I'll reiterate what I said before, and that is, um, I think that there's choices. I think that people have to learn how to make better choices, but they're always socialized into being one person first, right? So if their parents were, if they, what was demonstrated by, let's say this guy's father, where that's how he acted in times of adversity, then he's going to mirror that and be like, well, that's how my dad did it. So that's how, you know, not consciously, but mm -hmm. that's how I'm going to handle these situations. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean, I think to Candace's point that you see other people that handle things differently and get better outcomes that that choice isn't available for that person to do so. But at the end of the day, it depends upon, I think people have to become self-aware about what attitudes and what behaviors they're giving out that are self-defeating. Mm 
Right. That's mm -hmm. a self-defeating attitude. If that dude mm -hmm. was yelling out and doing all this stuff and he goes to the ticket agent, the ticket agent is going to be less likely to help that person because of how he was and how he acted. Yeah, it's like a vicious cycle, right? Yeah. Exactly. And exactly. some people are very powerful in their self-defeat. I mean, there's people who go decades in, in committed to self-defeat. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that takes resilience. Like to keep up with that, with that kind well, of like... You know, this word, can, mm -hmm. Is the word resilient or is the word like determined or tenacious? Like resilient to me is like, it's about bouncing back. It's not yeah. about like stick to -itiveness. Gotcha. Right, I get that. Right, but I, I think they're that. two sides of the same coin, right? Yeah, it's like that being have... strong in the face of whatever it might be, and right. sometimes whatever it might be may not be workable. I mean, the idea is that you want to put that resilience towards workability, because right. if you're if you're you know staying strong in the face of something like this is you know I'm a hard headed person. I could be very stubborn, right? So, <laughs> and my father has always told me that too. So it's like. I could be very stubborn about things that just aren't working. <laughs> right. And I keep bouncing back, yeah. keep coming for it, keep coming at it. And just, it's still not working, you know? So well, I think, that's... go ahead. No, I, I love what you just said. I'm as, I'm totally stubborn. Although I've gotten better as I've gotten older, yeah. but it sort of leads into my second concept of resilience, which okay. is, um, Brian, it's having the mental toughness that drives us to find more reasons to win than than, than excuses for losing. Mm. Ooh, well, I so think maybe, that, yeah, maybe, yeah. God, maybe that dude in the airport, maybe he was resilient because he had mental toughness. Like he was single-mindedly going to take down that entire travel agent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, miss his flight and still not be able to be booked till the next day. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there are times at which there's times at which. There's power in letting go and letting go. Mm. Mm. There's real power in that where you you you're in a situation that it makes you feel uncomfortable, like this flight, whatever, and you and you're trying to get through this. And there's real power in just relaxing and saying, you know what? I don't need to, I don't need to be a bull in a china shop. I can relax with this, I can find out the information, and whatever works is the way it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And that me forcing myself upon these other people is not going to change an outcome. I think that's part of that male machismo kind of crap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although we do that too. Well, well, well and again, yeah, women, yeah, women <laughs> definitely well, have that but, capability. <laughs> yeah, but I look at it as where did that come from? That came yeah. from a patriarchal view of how things are supposed to be where you have to fight 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 mm. for everything that comes your way and i don't mean like battle i'm talking about fight and and that's not that never leads to a good place it mm. never leads to a good place because you're always feeling as though you're in that fl fight or flight that mm. you're gonna lose missing out on something yeah. yeah that's such a good point i was in um so this is a theme that I had not picked up on until the last like year, but I was in Cincinnati with my twins because my son was having surgery and we went to Kroger to buy something and it was the wrong something. And I was trying to return it. It was taking forever. And I said, I wasn't screaming. I was like, can you just go get your supervisor? I just want to get this handled. Mm -hmm. And then Bria, like my 16 year old was like, how do you think that made her feel? Wow. I was like, I don't know. I just, I'm trying to get out of here. I think there's this whole idea of um, like, Brian, what you were saying is like, uh, I don't know, maybe we shouldn't be driven for all causes. Like that would have been an easy one for me to walk away from. Mm -hmm. But I was mm -hmm. just tired. I was like super yeah. tired. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's all a very interesting conversation, but let's do this. Let's take another break and then we're going to, go into the home stretch <laughs> i have more to you guys six years ago when i started so liberty my vision was to support everyone in improving their life through the discovery of their passion and purpose so they could become the best version of themselves to battle fear and ignorance and create a better world today 
get inspired to live your passion and purpose, visit Solivity.com now. Hey, welcome back, Candace and Brian. You, you. Yay. You, you, you. you guys are so amazing. So I'm going to get personal for a minute yes. because I believe our life is our classroom. So if you don't want to play, you could totally like tell me that. But <laughs> I know uh -oh. I know you're going to play. I know you're going to play. Uh oh, <laughs> you ready? Here it comes. So the last like for me, one of the big pillars of resilience is developing your ability to spring back into shape, but not mm -hmm. just spring back into shape after some adversity or in, in the face of adversity, but coming back better. Mm. So, you know, growing through your challenges, not just going through them, which is what I say all the time. So mm. I want to ask you, like, what is the most difficult challenge you've ever had to face mm. or one of them? Maybe it's not just one, but one of them. Mm. And what helped you spring back into shape? Mm. Wow, that's oh, that's a good one. That's a good question. Yeah, it <laughs> right. sure is. I got a good question. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't. I, should I jump in and go first, Brian? Are you? Uh, are yeah, you absolutely. Okay, because <laughs> I think Brian, I'm Brian's running into the garage right now with his cat. Right. Cricket. Cricket. So. I've been known to be an oversharer, but as soon as you're asking that question, especially as a relationship coach, you know, how, how I came about really focusing on love and relationships is, you know, having dealt with my own hardships around it. And it was later in my life that I went through a serious um, emotional mental health challenge that was just completely unexpected. And it was around a lot of things in hindsight, because um, we were talking earlier about how my mom, you know, she had dementia for about 10 years before she passed last year. And um, just some things had just shifted in my life that were just so unexpected. It seemed to happen all at once. Like, you know, I'd been working in television for years and I got laid off, you know, from probably the most well-paid, biggest job I ever had. And um, and that was somewhat unexpected. And after, you know, I don't know, years of working 16, 17 hour days to go from that and not really building anything else in any other part of my personal life, that was like an identity loss. And then I realized in my early 40s, I hadn't had children, I hadn't gotten married, I'd focused only on my career, and I was left with nothing but, you know, my little six pound Pomeranian and now an apartment I couldn't afford. And so that led me into a relationship that I got into out of lack, and it mm. ended up being a very physically abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. I had three miscarriages during that relationship. Um, mm full mental health breakdown. I was diagnosed with uh, depression and anxiety three separate times because <laughs> I kept not believing it the first couple of times and going back to, you know, how I was navigating my life, which wasn't very well. And it took probably a solid four or five years of just really being like dark night of the soul, just no idea of how to even begin to climb out of it and just things just not in any way looking like I'd ever thought they would in my early 40s. And um, I think that what brought me out of it was I got to a point where I found myself in a position that if my mother knew that I was in this position, I ended up, long story short, I got into a fight with the abusive partner at the time and he left me in some terrible neighborhood in the middle of nowhere in Queens with just the cocktail dress I was wearing and a pair of flip flops because I because I had changed my shoes in the car. And I was at some gas station. I had no idea where I was. I had nothing on me. My phone was dying. And I was mm -hmm. just in a de desolate position after, you know, 20 years of living in New York City mm -hmm. out there, you know, at, and physically like, you know, bruised up and beaten around. And, you know, we'd gotten into a Ike and Tina moment in the car. <laughs> I can laugh at, laugh about it now, but no, yeah, like funny. in that moment, it's not funny. It's not funny at all. But mm. now, I've been there. Mm -hmm. yeah, have you? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, and it's that ability to look back on it, and I'm to 
to me, I'm unrecognizable to myself. Like when I look at myself back then compared to now, I'm like, who was that girl even? But what snapped me out of it was just something said to me, if your mother saw you right now, like she didn't raise you to be in this position. Right. <laughs> by right. any stretch of the imagination. And now here you are, your life in danger. Like, like this is not this is not you. Something just said that. And I found my way home and you know, then things the trajectory started to change slowly but surely. And I had got out of that relationship. It took a few more months, but you know, I started, you know, I joined a women's healing circle, I got support, I got help. It took a minute. I got therapy. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that's all I mean we could laugh about it but you you name some really specific things and then Brian might jump over to you in a minute um well, like so you talk like this is a good conversation to have you talked about getting therapy you talked about joining a circle yeah. like can you give a couple of specifics yeah. that you, you mean feel like helped you rebound well other period? other people being willing to ask for support I didn't know it at the time because I wouldn't have had this language to identify it, but I was in such a lone wolf mentality that I needed no one but myself. And even within that relationship, I had that mentality. But I got to a point where it was so dark that I couldn't not ask someone to help me. Mm. Like I had even that very night, I had to beg the uh, the uh, ticket operator for this for the train to get on the train. I had nothing to get on the train. So I had to beg him to let me into the, the gate. And I wasn't someone who ever asked anybody for anything, anybody for help or anything. Wow. And so, yeah, it took being able to go on a road where bit by bit, I was willing to ask someone to help me emotionally. Mm, mm, mm. I think that's tough. I've been there also, like asking for help when yeah. you're already vulnerable. I feel like it just makes you more vulnerable. So yeah. I probably wrote out a few challenges a little too long. Like I could have cut them and solved them if I didn't have pride around yeah. them. Mm -hmm. um, Brian, what do you what are you thinking? Uh, so yeah, think about like the most challenging thing you've experienced. Oh, the, the, that and that's how, e yeah, that's easy. And then how did you spring back into shape, like better and stronger? Um. So the year was two thousand seven. And I was living in Houston, Texas at that time. And I was doing way, 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 way too much stuff. I had irons in the fire where I was trying to help some brothers um, build their business so that I could be a partner in it. Um, and I was work. I mean, I was doing all kinds of work. I was doing stuff at the church that I was going to, which was the Unity Church of Houston. Hey, Unity. <laughs> um, and I was also, you know, moonlighting, moonlighting, still doing music. And the, the company that I work for things kind of turned where <clears throat> I had said for a long time that they needed more staff and they didn't get more staff because they wanted to make more money with less staff. And so they were depending upon me to do different things because I could do the technology things. And long story short, I got very, very ill. Mm -hmm. um, where you know how it feels like you come down with like a flu or something like that. Mm -hmm. But that it never got, it. but it didn't get better. Right. And um, it got so bad that, you know, I had lost all kinds of weight. The doctor who I was seeing at the time, I mean, this was all within a month, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um the doctor who I was seeing, uh, you know, we did some, we did a CAT scan and they saw some different things that were in and around my liver. Uh, and she called me like the day after the CAT scan and said, I am concerned about you. Now, when a doctor says, <laughs> I'm concerned about you, you kind of take notice. Cause mm -hmm. up until that point, I was like, okay, I'm weak and I can, I can't really walk all that well, but it's not that bad right? Manish, being manish. Mm. And it didn't dawn on me how serious this really, really was until I got to the hospital. And mm. I had, and, and I, it was the moment where I literally asked that question came into my, my being, are you ready to go? 
Mm. Talk about a hard, like, moment to deal with. And of course, I yeah, at that point, I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not ready to go, and in all this, and I mean, this was a this was a three month, four month journey for me, where I was that ill, where I, I came out of the hospital and went back, and came out of the hospital and went back. Long story short, it was a it was a it was a huge bacterial infection mm. that I had gotten that was on the outside of my liver. Luckily, it wasn't inside; it was on the outside. Mm. Um. Do you but think it was spiritual, Brian? Very much so. Mm-hmm. Very much so. I think that I think that the that what I needed to learn was um that it's okay to say no mm-hmm. to stuff. Um it's okay to ask for help. Mm-hmm. Um and it, it's okay for at the baseline level to admit that you're not happy. And to move right. on, and to move on, and so I had a huge support system. I, you know, the 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 main thing that I that started everything was while I was into the hot while I was in the hospital. I did deep awareness meditations and journaling, and and that helped me invite people in to help support me through all of that. So that that's my that's my little thing. That's not a little thing. That is a <laughs> huge, huge thing. Yeah. Uh, now that's big. And I've, you know, I've done that journey with my son, not for myself, but being in and out of the hospital for the better part of like five years gives you a whole different perspective mm-hmm. on uh, how you want to live your life. But, you know, so let me ask you what coming out of that, anybody that's sort of going through something similar, what would, what would your life hacks be? Like, how did you, how did you come through that better than when you went into it? If the first question is, why did I create this? This isn't something that's just happening to you. It's happening through you. So why did I create the first life has is asking yourself the question, why did I create this experience in my life? And be brutally honest with yourself in terms of what comes back as the answer. And let that answer be okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a lot. You know, it's it's interesting. And I know we're running out of time. So we could talk about this and we grab lunch next Monday. Um, <laughs> Heck yeah, please. But there's um, a fundamental i think the first step in all of this like whatever your journey toward resilience is it's basically awareness of what your current situation is and not seeing it worse than it is not seeing it better than it is but just literally embracing it as it is and i i sort of think that's the step that most people have trouble with Absolutely. And also, too, just knowing that, you know, this is what we came here for. I think it was Brian who said in one of our conversations that we're in a meat suit. Right. So we're these beings that are are walking around in these vehicle, these organic vehicles. But we came here for all of it. Right. 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 Good, the bad, yeah. all of it. That's what we're here for. And, it, and it's not that we necessarily are asking for bad things to happen. But, you know, when they do happen, the understanding that this is the experience of life is part of what I think supports that ability to say, okay, so then what's there for me? What else is there for me? What else is possible? This is not forever. Right. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. There's so much more to talk about. Yeah. Um, Listen, I want to thank you both. You I I love every conversation that we ever have. (laughs) Candace, you know, there's people that are on this journey and right now they're thinking like, I've tried everything and I can't do it on my own. I need some support. So I am going to encourage everybody to um, do some research on your one, your one-on-one coaching, yeah. which, which to me is like the fast track, right? Yeah. You could do groups, you could do webinars, but like getting one-on-one coaching is absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely. So who do you feel like fits into that mold? Like who, well, like- who's ready? Who's ready for you? Yeah. So, you know, I say BIPOC plus professional women, but specifically if you are at that point where you're like, I've tried everything, 
I'm done with this. And I know for uh, sort of elder millennial women of color, there's sort of an air of like, men are trash. <laughs> 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 like I've been through all of it. I'm tired of it. I'm working on myself. And, you know, we do, we work so hard on ourselves and, you know, doing all the right things. And I'm, I'm achieving as much as I possibly can. And I still can't find someone who aligns with me. And so if that is, is your position right now, I'm the person to work with because there are things, things to move out of the way. And it's not about fixing ourselves. It's about just that understanding of knowing how to find alignment with another person. That's so powerful and so lovely. Um, and I'm looking forward to having you back on future shows because I do think having a, a healthy approach to our relationships is a really big part of resilience. Yes, definitely. On so, on so many levels. Being um, in a relationship is a big part of resilience. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and by the way, that relationship, whether it's with a partner or your children or your yeah. ex, or your parents and your siblings, like your know, relationships intertwine all of the net that becomes resilience. Yeah. So yeah. super excited to have you on to talk more. And then Brian and all of your like visionary, <laughs> amazing minds. <laughs> um, tell folks. So obviously I'm, you know, I'm on at noon. I'm a lunchtime podcast so we could have grub together, but you do wake up with Solivity. So can you tell people what to expect and how to find it? Absolutely. So you can watch This Morning with Solivity every morning at 8 a.m. Eastern. And of course, you can catch both of these two dynamic women with me, specifically on Fridays. It's like yeah. that fantastic Friday kind of fry yay <laughs> kind of <Yeah>. thing <laughs> going on. Um, but yeah, we're having real conversations just like on Tammy Talks. I mean, the the i think that's the be the start of everything and so um i'm just happy that you're part of our family and that you're having you know these talks about how to be strong and be good i mean that's what it's that's what it's really about yeah yeah absolutely thanks brian thank you you're welcome Andy. i'm so happy you guys were on with me today happy. um listen i am looking forward to seeing everybody next week for lunch at noon Tammy Talks podcast on Solivity and have a powerful week. Have a fantastic week. Yeah. subject to copyright owned by Affinity Global LLC. Any reproduction or republication of all or part of this is expressly prohibited unless Affinity Global LLC has explicitly granted its prior written consent. All other rights reserved.